travel from one Roman place to another Roman place. Along the way, he carry a letter with very obvious words. He will get hacked. <laughs> right? How did he hack? So we saw the you know those movies that people shoot arrow or they they have uh, pigeons flying and then the pigeon got shot down by some guy. Yeah. If they shoot the pigeon down or they shoot the guy down, they won't be able to know what, what happens. Well, because every day they will rotate this wheel. And then they know how to rotate the inner wheel and the outer wheel. How each letter actually link to each other. And this is called the cipher code. And this is the very most uh, primitive known way of encryption, which is protecting the data. So just now, the answer is, give me my free book. <laughs> but what else do you learn from this exercise? Anyone can guess? You also gave away your private information to me. So now I know your mobile number. I'm fair, I give you mine first. But now you also give me your mobile number in order to win a prize. Right? <laughs> so you give me a mobile number, I give you a price, and the price that I have is free. So the same goes for other things such as Facebook and even phishing emails. They give you something that looks really good and really nice or very sexy or very curious. Okay, then you, you click on it. After you click on it, you regret. You regret for the rest of your life. Why? Because they start sending you all the stupid spam. Okay, and then your Facebook account starts to have those funny, funny movie pictures that the people think very negative impression of the professionalism. Right? You regret. Why? Just for a moment of freedom. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't do this again later because it doesn't work anymore. But moving on, if we look at World War II, okay? Ah, now I move a few thousand years forward, okay? There's this thing known as the Enigma machine. Okay, now this Enigma machine is more, more intelligent than Caesar code. Why? Encryption now, don't need to use human brain really. They don't use a wheel. They have several things inside. Okay, to help you, give you a few billions of combinations. And they thought that they cannot crack it. So let us see what actually happened. And once again, we go to the cloud for the answer. And I hope it works. Since the mid-1930s, all the German armed forces and intelligence departments had adopted a standard machine for encoding their messages. Just look at the cipher machine and the number of messages. Let alone as in It was developed in the early 1920s as a handy tool for businessmen to keep commercial messages secret. It was powered by a battery, and its encoded messages were transmitted in Morse code to be decoded on a second Enigma machine at the receiving end. The critical element of the machine was three rotors, which could be set to scramble the message in a way which could only be unscrambled by another machine with the same settings. So now the wheel more complex and rotors could be replaced and set differently. As a result, each letter typed could come up in any one of 150 million ways. Given the almost infinite number of settings, it was not surprising that the Germans remained convinced throughout the war that Enigma was uncrackable. It was the Poles who took the first steps in solving this baffling puzzle. They knew of the existence of the Enigma machine and assembled a team of top mathematicians to crack it. Marian Rzezewski, Jerzy Rzezewski, and Henry Zygalski. But the team could not decipher messages without knowing the internal wiring of the route. Yes. So eventually, since the video is stuck, so eventually, this people, right, the Polish, they managed to do the cracking 
just three or five weeks before Germany invaded Poland. Okay, and they send this information, how they crack it to the British. And then the British, they created this project known as the Ultra Project, and they start to listen to different German messages over time. And because they could listen and they could crack the code, they eventually know when, where are all their bases, and eventually they could win the war. Okay? So, so the British to the credit. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the slides. So in order to do this right, encryption, so we have to jumble up text in many different ways. And there's a lot of ways to do it in the modern way. I'm going to teach you one later on in the evening when you feel very sleepy. Okay? I'll teach you one that you can go back and tell your wife, wow, I learned this today. <laughs> so, what, what is it that we are hacking? You know, we are hacking what? We're not hacking computers, we're hacking the transmitter of information. And that is seldom told to you by all the security experts out there. We seldom say, look, we are protecting your transmission devices uh, that will give you, you know, the kind of encryption and blah, blah. No, you look at the trend over time. You are intercepting the human, then intercepting the machine, then intercepting the telephone line, recently hot again, and then um, sniffers on the internet, and then recently 72 organizations were hacked by a certain country, and this country was significantly not on the list of the organizations being hacked. So, what happened? The only difference, right, is actually the medium for data transfer. And hence, the common denominator is actually data. It's not about computers, it's not about cloud. But of course, we have to come back to the top. And in the next part of the quiz, the next quiz, you have to pay attention to this slide. It should give you clues or more clues to win the prize. Okay? <coughs> okay, so you pay attention already. So, this is to keep everyone away. <laughs> so, it's very easy. Now you don't have to crack code. You just have to look for the clue here. Okay? And then you look for more clues later. So, fundamentally, you will find sometimes cloud computing experts will tell you it's the same. Okay? We already solved it. Cloud computing security, we already handle it. Okay? But is it true? Because what they are talking about may be cyber security, the, the traditional way of doing things. What we saw just now, wow, all the elasticity, all the virtual machines being created at such a big scale. Do you think they add more complexities? They do, right? Yes? I see some people nodding here. Or, or the other kind of nodding here. Okay. Then, Cloud computing security is actually a combination of all these complexities on top of all this cyber security. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. But before that, we have to understand. We have to, you know, we want to learn Kung Fu, we have to do the Mafu first, right? Yeah, so we have to do the Mafu now. The, how do you say in English? Horse step. <laughs> okay, you have to stand in the stance, okay? In the stance, you have to be able to, to do that. We have to understand security. Okay, from this angle, typically what we are always looking at in the news are the threats. Okay, and what actually constitutes to all these threats? Three different factors. One, the vulnerability. Okay, what is the vulnerability? It means, for example, you buy a new house, then you say, wow, well, I keep a lot of gold inside. So I'm going to have a double key vault door. But then, your window is left open. That is a vulnerability. Okay? And actor, the person or the organization or the group carrying out the, the criminal activity. And the last one is motivation. Some are Robin Hood. They think that when I hack you, I liberate more information and I wiki link out everything for you. Okay? But some of them, they are for selfish reasons. For example, to make money. 
they know all your credit card information, and then they just steal one cent off every transaction. And then they steal one cent off every transaction for one billion people per day. Okay? Imagine how much money they make. In some of the com security conferences that I go to, I actually meet live millionaires who come from a country which is very big at the top of the world. Okay? They really are millionaires. One of them is not him. He is a very poor chap. And this guy is known as Larry, Larry McKinnon. How many of you know him? You know him? Good. You know him personally? Yeah? I want to meet him. Through the news. Okay, okay. You know him personally, I want to meet him. <laughs> okay, what is, what is so special about him? He's a hacker. Okay? And the thing that is about him is that he has autism. So we go back to motivation. But autism is not a thing. It's his motivation. Okay, so the person is him. And what's his motivation? Since young, okay, because of his Asperger's syndrome, he has been behaving slightly more specially okay, from other kids. He asks his parents, this planet to this planet, what is the distance? Oh. If I'm the parent of stress, I cannot answer <laughs> how many light years, you know? Or what is the scientific name of this planet? How? Wow, very stressed, right? So the, con <laughs> the parents eventually buy him a computer. <laughs> Let him entertain himself, okay? But what happened after that? What happened after that? We, we, we find that he became very good at it. And, and eventually he hacked who? He hacked the US defense. He had NASA, and what's his motivation? Because of his craze for astrology, okay, astronomy, or astrology, yeah, for his craze for the outer space, okay, he actually wanted to see what he believed, what he hypothesized. He said, I believe that NASA actually have UFO evidence, and I want to show it to the world. I want to show this evidence and expose NASA. I said, NASA, you're bad. You don't tell the rest of the world that you know we we we, we, we already know that there's an aliens existing. So he thinks that his motivation is very noble, right? I mean to him he thinks it's it's, it's a good cause. And furthermore, he believes that there's evidence in NASA and US defense that there's anti-gravitational devices that are actually being found. And we can defy gravity and just fly here, fly there, you know. Yeah, like all those uh, last time the cartoons, right? Yeah. So how? So he hacked. And how did he hack? When he begin, all he need to do is just download the right program. He didn't have sophisticated skill. He just had to download the right program that will open up the back door onto all the computers that he go to. And he sent it by what we call malware. And then this malware got planted into the, the machines of all the US defense and NASA computers. And eventually, they all opened doors to him. Welcome. You know, welcome. So all the different computers all welcome, welcome, welcome. And then he got a lot of information. And then he claimed that he almost find the evidence, then they caught him. Whether we believe or not, it's another thing. Okay? But what happened after that? If you look at this photo and this photo, wow, suddenly a lot of people are interested in this. Not because he's a hacker, but because they say you're a bullying and autistic guy. It is his nature to actually do this. How can you prosecute that guy and, and then expedite him to the US? So the British say, no human rights. We all know human rights at all. You know, UK, we have human rights. Okay. So they, 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 do, they oppose the extradition. They say, no, please don't send him to the US. And then his mother, even come out to the public and cry, and even tell the public, look, my child, it's a very poor thing. You know, he didn't choose to do this. He was born with this effect. So, how? It's a very complex problem. But as a researcher, I'm very happy. Because I, I can see this kind of complex problems, and I can try to understand it and pass it on to everyone. Okay? So, now let's look at all the common threads. So, what, what are the tools that he used? He actually used all of them. <laughs> He used all of them. Okay? He did all of them actually. 
the use spam, which is what we all know, okay? Not the hot, not the not the just the, the bugs, okay? Vulnerabilities in the computer software. Then denial of service. Not uh, today my my shop closed. I don't give you service. No, it's not that. Denial of service is how the internet works. The internet machines actually, when you connect yourself right, to the internet, they talk to each other, whether you know it or not, through different protocols. Otherwise, how do they know where this server on this other side of the world, right? They have to communicate with each other. And because of that, you generate traffic, right? But there's the same, so you know CTE, now they're doing the widening. CTE, right, usually it used to be three lanes. Uh. Imagine there's three lane traffic going through. Now there's 50 lane traffic going through. So there's a traffic jam, right? Because of the traffic jam, people cannot access the website anymore. So it's called a denial of service. Simple as that. And then there's malware. And there's many different types of malware. There's self-replicating malware. I can clone myself. Yay, I'll spread myself all over the different networks. And there's population growth. And then there's parasites. Okay? And let me give you some alarming numbers later on. But just get yourself familiar, especially with this slide. Get yourself very familiar with this slide. In him. And know some of the malware there. Yeah. And you will know that, hey, I've seen some of them. Virus. Uh, so virus clones itself, aims to grow its population, and is a parasite. So what is the difference between virus and worm? Virus clones itself, grows a lot, but do not need another thing to run. There's another one called rabbit. Why is it called rabbit? Very interesting. Because what it does is it self-replicate very, very fast. Okay? It's just like rabbits. They, if you have hamsters or rabbits, right? You know that you put a male and a female together, after a few weeks, you have a colony of rabbits. Okay? Same. So, there's also backdoor and Trojan and logic bomb, which can be comprising inside, which can be components of worms and viruses. So the key thing, why we always hear in the news, right? Why we talk about virus and worms? It's because they have almost all three characteristics. And that's very scary. Okay? And since the beginning okay, of 2011, this year, every day we have 150,000 malware. Every day. Okay? Just a few days more, that you'll be more than Singapore population, right? Like the other distance. Yeah. Is Singapore and Korea also, right? So, every, every day, 150,000, okay, put it in perspective, okay? That means every half a second, we have a new malware. And it's a unique malware. It's not a. So, in one of the security conferences I went to, I had a very interesting conversation with this guy. He actually mentioned that, you know, uh, I want to go to, I want to go to the spring, spring festival of the uh, of my country. Okay, so I want to uh, do Chinese New Year. So I, I need more money. Okay, and he owns an antivirus company. Eh? He said, okay, okay. Then you realize that right, during the time that he's going through the Chinese New Year. Suddenly the malware increased. Why? Because in the market there are actually people who create fake antivirus programs to trick you. And they actually malware itself. And that's how scary it is. And that's why we have out of control already. It's actually out of control. So how can we handle this? We need something more powerful. Okay? And 19,000 malicious websites are identified daily. Okay? Daily meaning Every day, 19,000 websites. That means when you click on the link, the link opens up many other links. Sometimes you don't want to, but they still do. Okay? 
and they actually open up a hole from your malware to come in. That's how scary it is, right? So after that, we all go back and cut our computers. There are many other threats. All the different buzzwords you hear. Zero day attacks. Attacking the vulnerabilities of things that are not known to the creator of the program. Uh, for example, I created this program, I didn't check copy, I didn't test copy, I put it inside, and there's this hole there. And then they found it, and they have that, 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 That's called zero day attack. Okay? And why is it called zero day? Because you didn't know it on the zero day. Okay? And organized crime. There are people who actually go inside, plant the malware, or you download yourself the malware, and then this malware encrypts your entire hard disk. And then they have a message. If you want your data back, okay, pay us this amount of money to this bank. It happens. Okay? It happens in Russia a lot. And there's even nationally coordinated cyber attacks, very recently, very hot. There's a denial of service contact. Uh, what is this? I'll show you a video later. I hope it works. So this one is not run on the cloud. It's run on my laptop. Hello there. Are you about to click on a link you're not sure about? Well, I hope you've taken care, because if not, I could quite easily drop a Trojan horse, or a drive-by download, or some other sinister malware into your laptop, and turn your computer into a zombie. Don't worry, it's not one of those zombies. But it does mean I can take control of your computer without you knowing, and either steal your identity, or make your computer do things it shouldn't, like sending out spyware, or spam. I can make it happen without you noticing. And it's not only your computer I can do that to. I can make a whole network of them, which is called a botnet, or a zombie army. So I guess you'll want to know how to avoid it all, won't you? Well, the first thing to do is not to click on any unsafe links or download any attachments that you're not sure of. But if you're worried you may be part of a botnet, check if your computer is running slower than normal, or if it starts behaving erratically, or you might notice some unusual internet activity that you weren't expecting. You can check your task manager to see what it's up to. Disconnect from the network and see if the computer behaves differently. Looks like you've got a problem. Of course, your virus scanner should be telling you as well. So, what can you do to stop it happening? Uh oh, almost right. You need to make sure your antivirus and anti-spyware software is up to date. But use a reputable source. Rogue antivirus software could be malware in disguise. And remember, though that helps, it can't save you if you go and click on an unsafe link anyway. You're learning, but give it a full scan and make sure your firewall is on too. And if all else fails, ask an expert to help you. No need to thank me. I was just doing my job. So this is a video from Open University. It's available on iTunes if you want to download it and show your friends. So we come to this part of the presentation. Now, now we know about cybersecurity. Okay. What are the threats that are exposed by cloud computing? Because of the many layers of virtual machines that we actually create, there are challenges introduced by virtualization. And now the file don't just travel within one machine, it travels across many different millions of machines in the network of the cloud. And things are leaked in and out of the cloud. And you also have a really large scale. So do you think that the typical system administrator can handle that? Or current tools were designed for the old days internet can handle that as well. And at the same time, because the whole cloud is used by many different people around the world, you have something known as a live and dynamic system. Say computer A, C, and E are on at this hour. Later, B and D are on at this hour. 
and then later A, B, C, D, E are all on. These are all instances of a very live system. And because it's running live, we cannot reproduce it. We cannot turn back the time. How do we solve that? That's actually a research problem. So we come to cloud computing security. As I'm part of the Cloud Security Alliance, it is my duty to actually publicize the Cloud Security Alliance top threats article. And at least on the top threats, we are worried about people using it wrongly. We are worried about bad software or betrayers or traitors who actually come from inside. So somebody, you know, with the intention to hack, join the club for service provider. Okay, or imagine the mayhem after that. Then, oh, now, in this machine that I buy, okay, so in the cloud, we have many virtual machines, right? All of them sit on one same physical machine. Account A, account B, account C, all use the same thing. But to them, they looks like they have the whole PC. They are actually sharing the hard disk. They are actually sharing, so imagine, okay, um, StarHub and Singtel are using the same hard disk. And then some big data gets leaked over. How would that, how would that be? Right? So that's actually shared technology. They call it multi-tenancy problem. And we have data loss or leakage and even unknown risk profile. But there are also several soft issues. And because of the nature of this talk today, we are interested in this. Because everyone here, majority of you are not technical users. I want you guys to leave this place right with a good understanding to protect yourself, not just updating your fire, fire uh, the antivirus and creating more firewall. There are some things that we need to watch out for. The events that happen to the cloud, the rights of us, and the liability of the cloud service providers. And is it fair? It is very, very common that the cloud contracts are often lopsided. They only protect one party, and that's not you. They protect itself. For example, okay, a very prominent cloud provider, which used to sell books, okay, or still selling books, have no accountability for outages. If they are out, too bad for you. Four Square or other companies that run away have to say sorry to that client, just like that. But they lost how much money, right? And a certain social media website, which has a blue color logo, blue and white logo, the copyright of all your images they upload actually belong to them. That means they can use your wedding photo, or your photo being drunk, as, as the publicity material. Right? So how do we handle that? And sometimes some companies, they are based in some countries, okay? And, and then the cloud provider is in another country. How do you sue them? Oh, your cloud is down. I want to sue you. Uh. Can you or not? Can you sue him? Can or not? Can or right? Can. Actually, can. You need this. Because you need to conduct things known as mediation and arbitration, okay? which involves hiring a judge that is neutral and a panel of the jury okay, to come and make the decision for you. Okay? How? Can you afford it? And what about natural disasters? I don't need to say more about that. But recently in Ireland, one of the data centers actually got pumped up because they got let out. That's it. Then their spare power cannot sustain. So how? And what else? Do you always sign on the contract and agree and say yes? How many of you declined the contract before when you download something? How many of you? Or how many of you say yes every time? I agree. Raise your hand. Oh, you all those are. <laughs> you agree or not? Yes, right? I mean, most of us will just take yes, right? And this is what will happen. Now I'm going to challenge the club. Okay? I'm going to trigger a program which will run. 
A web browser. Don't worry, there are no vulgarities. But I want you to watch this and then see for yourself whether this speaks to you, the whole thing. And I hope that my Starhub longer will work. <laughs>